This is Capital Avi. I'm Unreal, and my first guest today is Arnaud Velázquez, who is an amazing ballet dancer, nowadays working in the ballet company at Croatian National Theatre. He was also one of the first artists together with Julia Figueras to participate in this amazing Capital Avi community with the dance video Futura Day. We studied ballet dance together four years ago. He's a good friend of mine, an amazing person to work with. And now, thank you very much for being here. Welcome to Cap Tel Aviv. Thank My you very first... much. <laughs> yes, amazing. My first question will be, what do you think about the title that I just invent for you about uh, the dance video that you participate? Okay, so, uh, I mean, this uh, title, uh, actually, I didn't thought about this. You, you suggested that, that title and um, I had to search about it because I didn't know what does it mean. And I found something that is a Japanese, uh, like two Japanese terms. Yes. And uh, it's, that means uh, just two people, just a couple or something like that. Is that right? Is yeah. that right? That's, I was <laughs> so, playing with the words. And it's good because actually it was my first idea with this uh, video. It was uh, uh, the idea of the video. Of the video was a dialogue of love, principally. Principally, so yeah, and it's a part of this, so it has some sense and it, ha it has some meaning. And I like it. And okay, we went for it. And yeah, actually the the video that I sent you is already it's cut. So. There's a part that is a solo that is not there, so it's better also for the title. It was good. It was good. Okay. The title. Cool. cool. Thanks. That's what we were trying to do. And also, um, could you explain me more about it? Like the idea behind what was also the purpose and because what I consider for me, like when we create art is we also have our kind of life, right? Our kind of life experience. And I would like to know what was your situation in that time? Uh, why did you decide to do that? What was the goal? Just tell me more right now, thanks. Well, this, this project, it was actually in, in Barcelona, we have this Trabal de la Cerca that we do at the end of, it's a project that we do at the end of high school. And um, my project was about uh, dance, and different uh, techniques of dance. I did a whole project of uh, like really big about uh, the about uh, dance and especially speaking about the different techniques like Baganova, uh, Cecchetti, uh, Bournonby and uh, Balanchin. And it was just comparing them and this was the first idea. And at the end of, the, of the, this project, I wanted to do something dancing because I, I, I'm a dancer and like to dance, of course. So the idea was to create a choreography with all these um, different steps from different uh, techniques. But what I actually did was creating the choreography first and after watching the video, deciding uh, which part is more Paganova um, and which part is more Cecchetti and these things. And uh, so I actually did that for, for a project. It wasn't like my decision. It was because it, it was like this. And um, we, I have my cousin, she, she's a art director. Okay. And I spoke with her and I said, I want to do this. I want to do this uh, video and this stuff. And she said, okay, we can we can do that. Uh, I will speak with some friends that they have cameras and we will film that and okay. So we went a few days before to this uh, theater that's it, that is outside, is a, is a Teatro Greek, because it's a Greek theater, so it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. And we went there, we decided uh, more or less where to do the, the different uh, shootings and different stuff. And a few days after we went early in the morning. So we, like this, we knew that nobody was going to be there. And uh, we did everything in one day, I think. It was from five in the morning until six or something okay. like that. 
it was like yeah, an intensive cool. project with a lot of hours and just going for it in that moment yeah exactly and yeah so we went there and i also chose uh, julia as a as my couple because we we already we are really good friends we have this uh, connection and i knew that the, i wouldn't we didn't have a lot of time so i wanted something that really worked from the beginning so i told her and she said okay and we did it and it was quite i'm really happy with the result just this solo part that i already cut it's because it was really bad the floor is really hard we were so cold uh, it wasn't the best condition to dance but i think the result is quite nice so i'm happy with, with it nice and we also love your video it was really nice really supportive for all of us and you bring another content that I'm just really more specializing in this contemporary dance and having you with the lines and all these conditions was really cool. And yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. And actually I'm waiting for see more of your works, you know? Okay, let me ask you something else. What are the qualities needed to become a good ballet dancer? Okay, yeah, no. that, that's a difficult question because it's <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go for it because it's not um, really politically correct what I'm gonna say. But well, let's say, let's say when uh, when I think about a ballet dancer, um, I think about someone that has to have two things. It's he has to be or he or she has to be fit, that and uh, clever, smart. I. The, the thing of being fit, it's really important. And I know that uh, nowadays it's really common to say, no, to everybody, everybody can dance. Yes, everybody can, but not everybody can be a professional ballet dancer. So yes, everybody can dance, but the professional ballet, it's so hard. And for this, you have to be fit. And let me tell you something that when we think about a uh, um, football player, we, th we already think about uh, this football player fit. We don't think about any football player fat. So in Bali, we don't have this. We think always like, why are they, why do they have to be so fit and why this? And it's actually because of the same amount of uh, training that we have. So it's not an election. Of course, there's also these cases of uh, people that they have uh, some disease, but if you are, like let's say it's a healthy um, person i think uh, it's normal that you are skinny and you are fit because it's what you need to yeah actually uh, it's like a prototype of dancer i mean if you want to be a ballet dancer you need to look like that of course you can be a dancer and go to other kind of styles and everyone is gonna approve that you know but if you want to give go to that image then you should also have some conditions once yeah. a friend told me like a uh, dancer is it has two qualities you know we are um people from like the the olympiadas you know like a uh, high athlete athletes that we need to have, be fit and trained but we are also artists that we need to add this extra value inside and that's yeah. some of the basic points yeah we have we are athletes but we have to look nice so <laughs> It's, yeah, it's difficult, that thing. And also the other thing is to be clever because um, with the amount of hours that we do, uh, you really have to be fast because even if we work a lot, you, we don't work as much as we need. Uh, you have to be fast to catch the choreography, to do what the choreographer is, is asking you to do. And uh, when, I was, when I came here for, for first time, I, I remember that I was new. I was like the new guy that comes to the company and this stuff. And they already knew the choreography because they were doing a swan leg and they knew the choreography and someone got injured. And I stepped in and I had to learn the choreography in just one afternoon because that same afternoon uh, in the night we had the, the show and you have to be fast to, to, to do that. So I think it's that clever and, and being fit. Basically. Basically. Nice, thank you. We're gonna take it in consideration for all the people who's watching us. We need to be fit and clever.
Okay, yes. now tell me more about how is the life in this company? We want to know more. Well, it's hard, I have to say. It's hard because, um, especially, I, I have to say that in this company we work uh, a lot, we do a lot of productions, and sometimes we are working about like in three different productions at the same time. I remember we were doing Pride and Prejudice, that is a production of a choreographer called uh, Leo Muich, that I like a lot. And we were doing, uh, we were doing what? Uh, Nutcracker already, I think. No, Swan Lake or Nutcracker, one of those, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Vladimir Malakhov. And also we were doing uh, Death in Venice uh, of uh, Valentina Turku. And we were rehearsing all these three things. They are so different and each day it was a different show. So you have to be this thing, you have to have this thing of, okay, now it's the mood of classical dance and you have to really be there in classical positions. But after you have to do something more neoclassical. So you have to break a bit with that. And next time you go back to, so for the head, it's so, yeah. it's so hard. And also for, for the body, of course. And after you arrive home and you're simply dead, you're completely dead, you rest and next day it's the same. So yeah, the weekends are the holidays for us because we have one day off. You have, you have uh, the day off on the weekends. It's like, I guess on yes. even Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and then every day you are having a performance it depends, but uh, when we have performances, it's almost every day, yeah. And yeah. do you travel around or do you stay in the same city? No, uh, this, this year, because of this uh, coronavirus and this, we are staying here. But last year, they went to St. Petersburg and to Portugal. And next year, it's already planned to do that again. And we have some tours also. So, yeah. We, we travel when we can. Now it's a bit difficult. Now it's a bit difficult. But do you have enough audience to see uh, every day different performance in the same place? It's, it's surprising because we were expecting less people in the audience and uh, everything is sold out. And we don't know, I mean, for me it's strange because I come from, from Spain and there the culture is not really something. It's not people they don't go to the theater even yeah. if you ask they always go to the theater when they have free time but it's not true <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so but here it's true it was always sold out uh, with performances like really classical that you know you already know when you see Swan Lake next time it's the same Swan Lake it's nothing changed but um, yeah, they go to the theater and they really like this. Once I remember, I went out, uh, I, I finished my work day and I took a taxi. And uh, I remember that the taxi driver said, why are you ordering a taxi at this time of the night? And behind the, the National Theater is weird. Normally the people, they order the taxi in front of the theater. And I said, no, no, it's actually because I'm a, I'm a ballet dancer. Ah, so you're a ballet dancer. Yes, but not student. No, no, ballet dancer from the company. Wow, I'm so proud. Wow, I'm so, thank you for um, taking that taxi. And I was like, I just took a taxi to go home. <laughs> wow. And he said, I will say, uh, say to the rest of my customers that I was driving home a ballet dancer. So they really like um, theater. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's true that in Spain, you tell that you're a dancer or you're an artist and they consider that you're a homeless, someone who doesn't have Completely. a job. And you go outside of Spain and then they see you like as a, as a really an star, you know, like it's really hard to talk with you. And that was a nice experience, yeah. I guess, for the, dry, the taxi driver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, for me, it was funny. <laughs> I wasn't wow. expecting that. Yes. Okay, for the people who are listening to us, do you have any advice that you could give if they want to join the company that you are? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I, I would like to, to say 
that it's a big company. It's we are about 60 people there, so it's not a company where you can when where they really take care of you. Like when you are in a junior company, they take care of you. Everything is okay. They know your name uh, here. It's different. 60 people, maybe they don't know the name. Now they know my name because I'm dancing, but there's people that they are not dancing too, too much. So they don't know the name of these people. And because we are a lot of people there. And um, also the choreographies, especially with uh, Leo Muich, they are so hard. They are, they know what they want, the choreographers. And uh, you see that the people that uh, they are dancing, they really give what they ask for. So you can't be less. You have to, to be able to be in the same level because they are paying the same to everybody. So you have to be in that level. You, can, you have no excuse. I'm, I'm the youngest of the company, I think now. But you know, I'm working with people with uh, 30 years old, or, I don't know. So even if I'm younger and you know this thing, ah, he's young, oh, poor guy, but I have to be there anyway. <laughs> so yeah, if you join the company for first time and this, get ready, <laughs> get ready because it's difficult. Okay, but then is when you did the audition and you got accepted. Do you have any advice for doing the audition? Uh, did you have to go to Croatia to do the audition? It was... Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember that. I was uh, in working... Before coming here, I was working in uh, the Royal Opera House in London. And, and I, my contract finished. So I was like, <laughs> I need something. And I started to send emails like a crazy. And I sent an email to... a. Uh, the national ballet of, of Croatia, but in another city that is called Split. And I went there and after I realized that Split is not the big, the, the uh, capital. So I was there, I did the audition, they offered me the contract and I was still in Croatia and I was like, uh, but this is not the main company. I want to go to the main company. I wanted to, I always want to go like higher and higher. So <laughs> I sent a message the same day even if I already had a contract in that company, I sent a message to the main director in, here in Zagreb and I said, I'm in Croatia. Can I go to do a, uh, an audition? And he said, well, yes, if you're here, why not come and try? But you know, it was a bit like young guy. Okay, you can come and try. So I changed the, the plane, I changed everything. I took a, tr a train and I went to Zagreb and I did the audition and he said, <laughs> I already had the plane for the next day. It was so fast, everything. And he said, okay, can you stay for one week? And I'm <laughs> oh, no. And I said, I'm sorry, but no, I cannot stay for one week. And he said, okay, I mean, it's just to be sure, but I like you. So I'm going to offer already the contract. And so, yes, I, the, he offered me the contract. And I said uh, to the other company that I'm sorry, but I have another contract. And yeah, I came here in January because I did audition in, in December and I came here in January. So, and that's it. I'm here since then. In January, you have a contract of one year. That means that yeah. this January is going to finish or do you know if they're going to make you another contract? The thing is that my contract finishes, but I know that they are going to renew the contract in my, in my case. I know that next year I'm going to be in the company still. That's nice. And then the conclusion yeah. from this story, I guess, is, is always like taking action because you were not sitting there okay. waiting for an answer. You were just like, hey man, I'm here, I'm texting you, can I do not the audition? And then just go and, and show up. And then yeah. at, at least you have the 50% done, you know, that if you say, yeah, I want to work in a company, but you just sit and wait for opportunities to come. No, that's, it's, I think that I always say, you, you don't lose anything to try. Maybe they say no, okay, so bye, I go home. But if you try, you try, and that's it. Maybe it's a yes. I, I, don't, I always think that trying is not bad. No, it's not bad. It brings you joy and it brings you uh, yeah. Yeah, a new 
a new life opportunity to learn about it. That's yeah. good. Amazing. I, lo I love these stories that now it really is inspiring me. Okay, next question. Do you consider yourself an artist? And to just give more information, what are the characteristics that we need to become artists in your opinion? Okay. In... Yes, I consider myself an artist. I do. But if you think about the definition of artist, it's someone that creates something. Someone that creates something to, like, to give to the public. And I don't really create anything. I'm actually doing what the choreographer says. Actually, the choreographer is the artist. I'm just the media for the choreographer to transmit these uh, things, this choreography to the public. So I'm just a media, if you think in the way of the definition. But it's weird because if you search for the definition of artist, it's uh, someone that creates. And if you say, search for the definition of ballet dancer, it's an artist. So it doesn't have yeah. really sense. But it's, it's nice and I think that we are an artist in the way that we take this choreography and we make it our own and choreographers, they really appreciate that when you would give more to the choreography apart that he's suggesting. So, yeah. Then what do we need to be artists to just give our own interpretation, like put ourselves, that could be the most important thing? I think, yeah, I have a, a scientific mind, I'm sorry, but I think that you have to think about uh, what the audience wants and what the choreographer wants. You have to give the audience what they are expecting from you. It's, it's everything artificial. Of course, you can put your uh, feelings in, in it if, if it helps, but you know, um, I don't know how does it feel to, how it's to die, because I, I never died, of course. <laughs> but if I have to, to represent that in, on stage, I have to imagine how that it's that, and I have to imagine how to transmit that to the public. So I think it's thinking about, about that, to, make, to be an artist and the, the good, the best method for me is to, know your public and to know what you are searching for and to know what they they want and of course to have a lot of experience of things that they are not related to ballet like uh, even in your normal life you can have a lot of experiences and uh, they work when you are angry okay say that when i'm angry in a show i will do that uh, you are um, sad okay i will save that for the day that i'm i have to be sad on stage so yeah that. here's what i found on the web <laughs> <laughs> the google <laughs> then then what you are saying is that you're applying your life to get an, into the show and give more volume into that character that you are interpreting but i think yeah that's amazing yeah. Also, once I was listening a podcast where they tell that the most important is the message more than the person who is actually giving the message, you know, and you yeah. as a mover, you became like the message who is the public receiving, you know, but it's not, not you, the person who is doing it, just the message in love and what you want to communicate to others. And that's really beautiful. When you, when you think about it, it's like, I'm not the important person. It just the message who wanna, what I want to communicate with people. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. And also something that, how, how do I define being an artist for me is someone who has a message, like you as are now, you have a message, your personality, your point of views, whatever, and then you take actions, you know, that, that's what makes the difference between someone who is not an artist, because if you can have ideas, yeah, but what does it work ideas if you don't take actions and make something out of it? You know, yeah. we, we want to see results, even if it's in your own body, in brains, people, or other kind of crazy art development. Okay. How do you see yourself in five years? Do you want to stick to this company or would you like to change? Uh, tell me more. 
if you would ask this a few months before, I would say no, I want just to be here for three months, I three years, and after go to another company because I'm still young and I can go to another company. But now, <laughs> being here, I realized that, well, if, if I am here, I, I am promoted, I create a family, I, 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 there's a lot of things that they are gonna, that, that I will have, that they will make me stay here. And I think that's also a good option. I would like to, I don't know, I, I want, what I was saying, I always want more and more and more. So I would like to be one day principal dancer in the company. And I think that's possible now seeing the situation of the company. So uh, if one day I'm a principal dancer and I have my family here, I think I will stay here for sure. And especially with that public and that people that they really appreciate what is art. So it's really nice. I think okay. now I'm more in the way of staying <laughs> better than the way of living, but who knows? Yeah, but good to hear that because then more people that are joining this community can come maybe one day and see you in real life in Croatia, that that would be amazing. And that I please recommend you. Yes, take action, buy the ticket and go and see him. I really recommend it. Okay, what do you think when we talk about success? Success, success, yes. Success, yeah. Uh, well, I think... I think about um, this, when they being a, a principal dancer to be known, and I see my colleagues here that they are principal dancers, that they are my friends, and they they always have these this meetings with the president and meeting with someone, and I, I'm like, I like this, <laughs> these things, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but these premieres and to be the fame, I, I like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's, so that's fantastic. I I think that maybe if I think about success, I, I think about that. I think about being famous in some way. So yeah. That people recognize your job and what exactly. you're doing and they know, oh, this is a now, that is success for you. Yeah. Okay. Completely. Okay. Let's see in five years, what do you tell me if you're still feeling that or you, you arrive to other more deeper conclusions? <laughs> because see. imagine yourself arriving there and then you're going to be like, okay, one year, two years. Now what's no, my yeah. next step, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, um, the, and also what this uh, coronavirus situation is uh, showing us is that you can't have the life planned because you never know what's going to happen. So that's the thing, I can't plan, I know what I want, but I don't know what's going to happen. So it's a bit this thing that you don't know exactly, but yeah, I know what I want, so I will do whatever I can to arrive there. Cool. And we will support you to do that. And you know, Thank every you. time that you need help, just reach us and we, we can talk about it. Okay, next question. What is your relationship with money? It's good. <laughs> it's good. good. Uh, here in Croatia, for example, I have to say that I, I earn less money than when I was in London because it's it always depends on the city a lot. I have friends around the world and each one is different. But here, for living here in Croatia, I don't have any problem. I can do whatever I want. I can go out whenever I want. I don't have to be checking the bank account every five minutes. So in that way, I'm quite um, safe. But I have to say that when I was in London, I was uh, earning a lot of money, a lot. Because of, of course, it's the Royal Opera House and, you know, it's something. And uh, I also took a really trashy apartment <laughs> because I didn't know how much they will pay me. So I was taking a really a shitty apartment and really far away, one hour and 40 minutes from, from the center, I mean, from the Covent Garden, that is where is the Opera House. And living with four people 
and I just had my room and the rest of the house was like the kitchen and the bathroom and that's it. It was so weird. Mm. But I saved a lot of money in that uh, in that job. And then I came here and now I took a better apartment. I, t I learned from that and I said, okay, now let's do it better because i'm not gonna be here for one year i'm gonna be here for more than one year and i want to be comfortable so when i thought about this contract i knew that the money was less but i also knew that i wanted to be comfortable so i just took the decision i yeah i decided to take a better apartment near to the company i can go to the company now and uh, with my money, I, I'm surprised because even if I did all that, I can live well. So it's quite a cheap uh, country. That's nice. Say. That's nice. And can we know exactly how much do they pay you? They pay me. They pay me in the in like in kunas. That is the coin that they use here. I earn five thousand kunas a month, I think. I don't know how much euros is that, but yeah, 5,000 kunas. Okay. Okay. Then people who want to join that company and they are really enthusiastic, they know that they can get around 5,000 kunas. Yes. And if they want to know, you just can go to Google and translate how much euros are yeah. those. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it. I don't think about euros anymore. It's horrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. It looks like you are having a really nice time there. Yeah, I love it. I'm so happy, I have to say. <laughs> cool. Next question. Do you have other abilities apart from dancing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, but they are not really something important. <laughs> I, I like to write things. I like to do it when I have time. I used to do it more before, but now I don't do it a lot. And I also like to do some photo shootings and some photos around, the, especially around the city. I also did some photos to the company. Uh, but yeah, pho photos, uh, photography and writing, I think it's the, Yeah. Cool, but that's really interesting. I, actually, we also want to know more about you in these aspects of your life because, okay, we know that you can dance, but I think also you're a human being, a person, an artist, and you could also collect the other things and just create your own material. Just think about I, I, it. I like, I mean, when I do these photos and this writing, just because I need to go out of this world of ballet, because it's everything, everything in my life, it's related to ballet. So I like to, when I write, I normally do it at night, when I come home and I'm so tired, so I just write whatever. I have in my mind and when I do photos I go really early in the morning on Sundays I like a lot this <laughs> I go really early at 5 in the morning something like that I get up and I go around the city find like really get lost there and I find places and people that they're interesting that they it's like my moment it's like my meditation I, I like to do that a lot yeah cool nice too hear that and and can we find all these materials somewhere or it just for no. now it's just for you okay <laughs> now it's for me no yeah photos yeah i i have some places where i have photos uh but uh it's uh like another account <laughs> okay maybe you could release it here on cap tel Aviv and maybe one day <laughs> maybe one day okay nice nice Fantastic. I'm curious about what do you write and what I will, do you... I will give it to you. You will see. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay. And now, talking about food, talking, you said that to be a good ballet dancer, you need to be fit, right? Uh, what do you do in your diet? Do you follow something or are I'm... you vegan? Yeah, <laughs> I am. I mean, I don't like to say that I'm vegan because I'm, I'm not i think it's a bit insulting for people that they really are i i have leather boots and i have leather jackets so i'm not vegan 
but I have a plant-based diet, that's true. So on my diet, it's uh, based in plants. And uh, the thing started in the first quarantine. I don't know, now we have to call them like the, the world wars, the first, world, the the first, first quarantine. <laughs> the <laughs> but, first lockdown. <laughs> yeah. So in the first lockdown that we had, uh, I was at home and I did this massive, uh, like I bought a lot of stuff just to stay at home. And uh, one day I finished uh, the meat, I didn't have more meat. So I said, okay, let's wait. What, let's see to what, uh, what I have. And I had some vegetables and uh, tuna and some eggs. And after I said, okay, let's finish the tuna. I finished the tuna and okay. Now, if I finish the eggs, I'm gonna have a vegan diet. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> and then I, I realized that I could live without this. So then what I was saying that I have a scientific mind, I need information. I, I like to search a lot of things. So I went on the internet and I searched a lot of stuff. I also spoke with my dietist. And she said, we did an online uh, interview, uh, like a, a visit online in that time, it was like this. And she said, okay, we're gonna do this diet. And I said, wait, wait, but I'm an athlete. You have to think that I'm a ballet dancer, but some, you know, sometimes you are a ballet dancer, they don't think that you're an athlete. True. And she said, okay, yes, don't worry. And she did the diet. And uh, I'm following that and I'm so happy with it because now I feel that I have more energy, energy. And also normally in summers, I used to lose my shape and this summer I didn't. So it was easier for me to go back to the normal work. Mm. So yeah, I, I'm happy with that diet and I think I will continue by the moment. Cool. It's really nice to hear that more athletes and people are getting into this plant-based diet. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, but you, when it ha happened the first lockdown, you were in Croatia or you were yeah. with you? In I Croatia. was in Croatia because actually what was the truth is that they said, okay, lockdown. And my parents immediately, they said, do you want to come here? And I was like, wait, lockdown with my parents at home? I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> I prefer to stay here alone. And yeah, I did. I went stay here up there. Yeah, actually, actually, I also did the same. You know, my family was like, "Come here." I was like, "You know, I'm here in Netherlands. I can keep going out at least. There's more freedom. Yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna stay here." Oh, but but did you visit them on on summer, summer. or? Okay. Um, yeah, I spent the summer there and I came back. So. Nice. Did your family already went to see you performing in Croatia? They are coming the 21 of December. They will come and they will see a performance of Nutcracker. So it will be the first time that they see me dancing since uh, last year. They've been one year without seeing me dancing. Yeah. Wow. I, I would love to know what do they think about it. If they see like a huge <laughs> change or... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Just, just, Let's just re read me and tell me, uh, like, if they have. Whoa, man, that was amazing! Or I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, let's. See. I hope it is. Okay. Do you have any project coming up that you would like to share with us, apart of just dancing in this company that we know that it's like your official job? Do you have extra projects that you are working with? No, I don't really have any project now. I would like to to do some other stuff, but now it's a bit difficult for me because I'm not Croatian and I know some Croatian friends and colleagues that they, because of they are Croatian and they are from the national company, they have this type of collaborations with uh, some fashion brands or some stuff. Mm. But in my case, uh, I'm quite new, so I'm starting now to create my path and to create my, my, like, my signature, who I am here in Croatia. So I don't have really anything apart from this, uh, the productions of the company, yeah. 
Nice. You know that here on Capital Aviv, we are working in this community, but right now it's like we have this place where you can promote yourself as an artist. And then we have also Capital Aviv Original that for now it's just me performing, but let's say that I'm aiming to really say, oh, Arnau, what kind of project would you like to do? And you tell me, mm, I would like to create this and that. And then I give you the tools and the things necessary to that happen, you know? And it becomes like, like a sponsor, let's say, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, actually there's a lot, I've been trying to create stuff, but the thing is that now uh, I, I have like more, I'm so critic with myself. So I don't like to see myself dancing. I prefer to say what, uh, what other people uh, have to dance. I, I really see myself as a choreographer one day so yeah i'm looking forward to finding someone that is uh able to to do some choreographies and to spend time with um, with me as a choreographer and try to do something because i think i have good ideas and i will try here in the, with my colleagues and let's see what i do and then i will give it to you to share it around the world yeah also Okay, that's amazing. We are also working on a thrive. Um, that, that's new. I'm, it's not released anywhere. You know, it's something that I'm working where people pays and support like a subscription thing, you know, and then I was thinking to organize like meeting with the people and then talk about projects, what we can do next. Um, you know, get this feedback because I think also through talking, you can get more clear ideas, uh, yeah. find other perspective of view that maybe it's like okay yeah, I'm creating this project in Croatia but I'm gonna have a meeting with all Capital AV team you know and then see what they can give me back you know because it's not just gonna be dancers it's gonna be musicians it's gonna be composers it's gonna be uh, visual artists and I think that can bring a lot of value and I'm just so excited just tell me what do you think about Capital AV if you have any feedback any things that we can improve and if you if I present you tomorrow this drive, you will subscribe and support that thing. Just yeah, I totally. I, I think that's quite. I mean, it's amazing. And also, also what you said to uh, be in contact with musicians, to be in contact with artists in general, that they are needed for a production. So it's a good way to share your stuff and to also have these. Uh, other the vision of other people around the world and i think that's helpful especially in that situation that we are now that nobody can really do anything that i mean you can do stuff but it's everything a bit weird so i think we have to support ourselves uh, like the community of artists we have to help ourselves and i think it's it's a good idea i i think i will join that uh, if I have the opportunity, I would like to, yeah. Cool, then I will inform you and maybe you can, we can make it happen, you know, because now it's this, I really need this support with people to really reach out. Also a crazy thing that I did that I didn't tell to my family, I just spent 2,500 euros in a course to help really put clear my ideas and create a business system because what, I, I think that it's a pity that we really rely on the money that the government give us, right? But that's, that should not be like this. It should be like the people really paying for that, consuming that and wanted to see more, you know? And that's what I want to reach, to educate people to get into our field and really a sponsor art. And then they can get maybe, yeah, the, the joy of seeing art and really absorbing this and not just food you know things that it's of course we need food but i i have to say that i know you since the beginning of katalabi <laughs> so mm. i remember you were trying to do this uh, youtube channel and this stuff and lately i've been like i've been watching instagram and the social medias and now you have something clear now you have something that you want and i really look forward to seeing what's happening with that because i now i now see a path and now see a, a 
like that you can achieve something that way and that's why i'm here <laughs> because i i like this yeah yeah it was so nice also because i was starting this course and then they push you to really talk and tell all your ideas and I just said that idea of making an interview and you were the first one to really reach me and say hey man do you remember me <laughs> if you want to do an yes. interview that's my turn that was yeah. really appreciated and um, yeah and I think we really learned a lot about you there's so amazing information I will also try to work more harder in this format to make it better because I think, I think, I don't know, the quality of the camera is not the best <laughs> and also the quality of the audio is not going to be the best, but we are working on it. Um, if you have something else that you would like to share right now or you would like to no, go more deeper. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity of doing this, inter doing this interview. <laughs> Even if I, I suggested that, <laughs> I mean, you suggested the, the thing of doing an interview and I was like, hey, <laughs> that's me. But that's the but, difference because you really take action, you know? It's like, hey, that's the opportunity. I'm going to take the action. I have to know already. I'm just going to do it. And that's what I really appreciate from you. It's a value that yeah. I'm really taking and telling to all this Capital AB team, take action, do things, create. Yeah. And I was thinking also the other day, uh, it would be really amazing what they were saying, because nowadays you have Instagram of everybody that you like, and uh, you can just send a message to whoever, with a choreographer from that you like or whatever, and if they answer, good. If they don't, they don't. It's like uh, maybe some of them, they, they will say yes, because some of them, they are really nice people. So... Why not try to bring some like famous people and I think that would be that would give to the channel uh, another uh, like um, like a help it would it would help to be more known around the world and uh, yeah I was thinking about that the other day and just yeah thank you very much for letting me be there. <laughs> In your first interview <laughs> yes and if this improve and we make a better quality i will reach you back and we will do something but 100 times more better and i really want to go deeper into you as a human being into traumas into what happened with your life relationships okay. all kind of more detailed experience that can reach us more and i'm open to speak about it <laughs> i like a lot to speak <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Uh, I think we are done. Maybe. Um, do you have a message that you would like to tell to your younger Arnau? If he was looking at this to say, hey, Arnau. I would say maybe don't be so afraid because I remember myself when I was younger and I was so afraid of everything. And now I started to realize when I was growing up that nothing is really important. Of course, it can happen something that it's horrible and yes, okay. But I think we just have one life. That, that's gonna sound so hippie, but <laughs> we just have one life and I don't lose anything in trying things that, why not? Try and let's see what happens. And after you will think about it, in I, my education was based in one thing that my mother always told me, that is, uh, it's in, in Spanish, well, in Catalan, actually, that is deca, and it's de disfruta, that is enjoy, e, habit, I would say that first in Catalan, and after I will translate it because it's so difficult. Deca, disfruta, vita, cambia, accepta. So it's uh, enjoy, uh, avoid, change, and accept it. And that's the, the way you have to do things. First, if something is wrong, if you have any problem, first try to enjoy. If you can't enjoy, then try to avoid that problem. If you can't avoid it, change it. And if you can't change it, just accept it. And that's life. 
And when you try something, it can be good. So perfect. If it's bad, just do these four things and it will be good at the end. You will accept it probably because I have to say that the majority of times you have to finish accepting it. But yeah, I would say just try and don't be afraid of whatever it's coming. Wow. I'm really <laughs> moved. <laughs> I think we're going to take a lot about these four words to use and to apply. Um, I'm just going to say you goodbye. I'm going to finish the recording, but we stay a bit more because I want to do something okay. more talking. Okay. Amazing. Thank you very much for all. Uh, uh.